All right, it's not Saturday night and I'm not sitting at home alone making AI videos, that's for sure. So I'm gonna do a 15 part video, which sounds like a lot. I'm gonna cover the 15 interesting things that I found about AI in, I'm calling it year one of Gen AI. I get it, all these people have been doing AI for decades and they've been doing this and that and they know all about it, but generative AI started really with ChatGPT in November 2022. So I'm saying it's year one. Um, so 15 things from year one. Number 15, and these are in a kind of approximate order, fake news. So I don't mean um, fake news that it's commonly referred to, but I think this, I think the economist said this is going to be the most democratic year in history. I think it's the most countries having elections ever in history, something like that. Clearly, we've got a big election in the US, maybe a big one in the UK, and now you can make videos and you can't tell what's real and what's not. So this is kind of something to come, just something that's interesting. That I think we're going to talk be talking a lot about this year because there's going to be a lot of fake news videos he said this we don't know who said what i think that's going to be a topic coming up so that's more of a future one 14 not getting run over this uh, this is down on the list but it's actually for me it's one of the top not getting run over as far as not getting it's more of a developer sort of concept that whatever you're building and i felt this in the last year whatever i'm building i've been thinking is this going to still be valid in a week or a month or in three months or is this just going to be run over by AI? Am I wasting my time building this because this is going to be something which ChatGPT itself will do or something which any AI can do? And it's hard because most things that you build today, you can think, you know what, in a year this will be much easier and in two years this may be one prompt to build this whole thing. So that's something I think about a lot. A lot of companies were run over in November when OpenAI came up with their new tools, so things like GPTs and PDF readings and that kind of thing. So a lot of companies have been building for months. All of a sudden, you can do it now for free on ChatGPT. 13, synthetic data. This is an interesting just concept. So synthetic data is data created by the LLM or by the AI. One of the problems that AIs have is they haven't got enough data to train on. Um, that's one of the limiting factors right now. So there's a concept that can you learn, can the AI train on its own data? Turns out most people think you can. And I just think that's an interesting thing because it seems like a circular argument where if, you, if you're making the data, you can't learn from it. You can't write a book and learn from your own book. But the way AI works, it knows everything about everything. So when it creates data, it's actually creative. It's writing stuff that hasn't been potentially thought of or put together by humans before, so it can learn from its own data and progress. Turns out if it keeps repeating and keeps creating more and more data, on the second time or third time it kind of maxes out and starts to go down from there. Just an interesting concept. 12, non-stop updates. That's been interesting in the last year, the fact that I was listening to something on YouTube the other day and they were saying, they were talking about future images and how they're gonna be better in the future and they were looking at examples and somebody said yeah but this is from back in August the fact that we say that today that's never happened before in history where we're saying yeah but that was technology from five months ago we used to say that was technology from 10 20 years ago now we're saying oh that was three months ago four months ago that's how fast this stuff's moving and it's not going to slow down first time in history we've moved at this speed easily uh, number where we, I don't normally plan these videos, but because 15 things, I can't remember 15 things. 11, AI and everything, that's going to be 2024. Um, Microsoft Copilot is the AI part of all of the Microsoft products. Google's got Duet, which is their AI part of the uh, Google suite, whatever Google's called now. I think that's just going to become where we'll go in the future. Adobe's got their AI part of Photoshop. So every software company is going to have an AI piece of it and it'll start to become more normal. It, there'll be less shouting about this is AI and this is not AI. And it'll just become part of our normal workflow. And things will just be magic and work better. Just like Autocomplete has done for the last, whatever that's been, 10 years. There'll just be things like that that'll happen that we'll get used to. Number 10, content at scale. This is an interesting one that 
you, you see these stories every now and again on Twitter or, or, or places where someone's created 4,000 blog posts overnight and got all this traffic. I think people are doing that. I think more people, a lot more people are doing that than talking about it because you can create 4,000 blog posts overnight and post them. And Google, well, if you post 4,000, Google's going to know. But if you release them in a normal pace, you could beat Google. It's an interesting one because we can create unlimited good quality data now. So what's what makes you stand out? I think it comes back down to authority, which is kind of Google's initial thing, um, page page rank. So the authorities that create good data have done for a long time and can be trusted to create good data will be those trusted by Google in the future as they are today. And I think the same for sort of branding, for company brands, personal brands. It's people that are known to create good data will be trusted in the future because we're never going to quite know again what's real and what's not, who's written which paper. Um, number nine, AI Friends is an interesting one. I, I've tried a few of these this year. It's an agent, right? It's, a, it's an agent that you interact with on your phone or wherever you do it. You can do this on Facebook now. You can use Facebook Messenger and there's a 20 agents or whatever on there you can have a conversation with. A lot of them have become agents for lonely people. AI girlfriends as well. Um, too many of them are AI girlfriends. I've downloaded a couple, not knowing what quite what they were. Um, it's just an interesting concept. It's it's a it's a it's a um, it's a concept that we haven't really talked about before. It's a Black Mirror episode, or it's more than one Black Mirror episode, and it's going to be something that's going to hopefully help people. Bit weird maybe it will maybe it won't maybe it's a good thing i don't know but it's going to happen where people are spending hours talking to their ai friend which becomes more and more human number eight return of the trip planner i'm going to do a separate video on that i talk a lot about trip planners but because chat gpt or ai makes trip planning tools really easy to make they and and they've been used by some of the big launches by open ai and google so now there's all these trip planners, which kind of died a few years ago because they all failed. Now they're all about again. Um, I use um, I use generative AI for trip planning just to do some basic research. It's it's fantastic. Um, these companies, I'll do another video on. Um, we'll find out if they're going to make it or not. I think this year, a lot of them. Number seven, just chat GPT, how it, just the LLM, the large language model, to me is interesting how they train i think is fascinating the next word it guesses the next word it trained by reading the world's data that i keep going back to that and most people not most a lot of people still don't understand that that's, that's all it's done and that enables it to speak english and create this revolution so just the simplicity of chat gpt i also think 90 percent of people's time if you are not using ai yet should be just in chat gpt not fancy tools not any of this complex stuff just be doing text to text prompts in chat gpt that's where tons of the value is that i think people are distracted by all these tools which do all these other things for you um we have number six is images hit prime time so five months ago i was i was writing a presentation for a conference and i was just telling i was writing that images are not ready yet it's interesting to play with they're fun and then the latest version of DALI, which is OpenAI's image, came out. Uh, Mid Journey got some updates. Those are the best two. DALI's part of Bing, which I use a lot. Took a jump. Now you can create images on those uh, on those platforms, and they're as good as real photos. Sometimes you're going to tweak them. Sometimes it's a disaster. But you can create unlimited photos now. So I think puts us in a whole different place going forwards especially in travel uh, because photos are obviously really important for travel now i can go and create 400 photos of visiting san francisco or all different places um it's just, it just it just it solves a huge a huge previous problem images on websites are one thing images on socials are another i don't know if we should or not there's a i think there's a assumption that photos posted on socials are authentic obviously ai images are not but maybe they are because they depict something that actually happened it's just not the actual photo 
that's that. I'm going to cover the next five in, an, in the next video. I'm trying to keep these short. So uh, that's 15 to 6. Look for the next video for the rest.